Remember, whatever discipline you're in, whether you're a musician or a photographer, a fine artist or a cartoonist, a writer, a dancer, a singer, a designer, this is what you should do. Make good art. This is Creative Soul coming back with our new session in April with our lovely guests from Sungmiho Space Sweepers, Rahel and Max. Welcome. Yay. Welcome, welcome. Hi, thanks. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening to our podcast for the first time, Creative Soul is an interactive community of creative individuals living in Seoul with our mission statement to inspire. For those on Instagram Live, please feel free to ask questions directly by typing your comments or questions into our live chat. Also, feel free to emote using encouraging facial expressions in the chat. So, I'm Sian, the moderator for today and co-founder of Creative Soul, and Jack. I'm Jack. I'm the co-founder of Fame Creators Network and a fellow actor. Very nice to meet you both. Nice to meet you nice all. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> So can the guests also introduce yourselves to the people on live? Sure. My name is Rachel, and uh, I've been in Seoul for a few years, and suddenly I'm doing acting and modeling, and I came as a musician, basically, as a traveler. So nice to be here. Very nice. Very nice. Um, my name is Massimo. Uh, many people could just call me Max. Uh, I'm originally Italian. And I came to Korea for my PhD mm. uh, in computer science. Doesn't sound very creative, and I would understand it. In fact, probably I'm the least creative person in this, <laughs> in this room, but I, I stumbled upon the chance of acting uh, when they were looking for uh, an Italian-speaking uh, person for a drama. Oh. And then I had the chance to participate in Sunyo with uh, Rahe. So that's when you two first met? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. It seems like for both Rahel and Max as well, Rahel, you came to Korea in 2018, right? Uh, did I come in 2018? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, July 2018. Yeah. So for both of you guys, it seems like like the acting career wasn't like the main purpose, but then like you kind of, by coincidence, like... But like fortunately, like got into this acting as well. So how's it like in Korea in Seoul? Um, well, <laughs> you could go ahead. I'll go after. <laughs> I've been in Korea since 2007. Uh, I've been living in Daegu first. Oh, so I was born in Daegu. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I studied in uh, Kyungbuk National University. Mm. So I got my PhD there. Uh, got married. Lived uh, near Daegu for a while, and then moved in Seoul a few years ago. Mm. Um, I find, you know, Seoul to be very, like, extremely dynamic. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. It's somewhat hard, I think, to actually find uh, the chances, uh, even when you're looking as a, as a foreigner. I've been lucky in that uh, a friend of ours uh, advised me of this uh, of this chance they were looking for someone speaking Italian otherwise I you know I would have never thought that there was any interest in in foreign actors or you know either I'd, for either dramas or or movies tell me a little bit more about that story I'm curious to hear because we, <laughs> we all have a version of that story yeah. but yeah. I'd love to hear that how did that happen right um so uh, the the person I'm talking about is uh Henny Savinage and he he's been in many many dramas and, and most movies. of us know Henny right <laughs> in some way and uh, so he auditioned for the part but you know he said I actually don't have the time to do it so why don't you try and Henny I met Henny thanks to my wife and her activities um, but that's it basically um, then I, I yeah participated nice. in a drama and then did the audition for Sunni very cool very, Rahel, what about you? What's your story? <laughs> well, I actually, uh, I'm an older person. Uh, I'm going to be 67 in July. Oh, so when I came, I was, I guess I was 64 or something like that. But uh, my children were all grown up and everything. I was kind of doing nothing at this point in America. And I wanted to get a taste of that freedom I used to have when I was 20. So <laughs> my kids all said, with their blessing, 
uh, they said, go ahead, Mom, just go. Go have your adventure. So I wanted to see this side of the world because I'd seen, you know, other places in the world. I've lived in Israel. I, I'm a dual citizen in Israel as well. And so um, I set out as a traveler just to, you know, to feel free spirit again. <laughs> so I, uh, when I got to uh, Korea, I ended up in Busan, mm. which I love, absolutely love. And uh, I was doing language exchange, working in a, a language exchange situation there and busking mm. on the beach at Hyundai, which oh, nice. I absolutely loved. And I just loved, started to love Korea. And my travels got stopped, <laughs> and uh, I needed to get a visa. I started looking for work, and I didn't have the proper visa, so I needed to get the proper visa. And somebody referred me to an agency, and I suddenly became an actor and a model in, and kind of a musician still. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then actually Sing Ri Ho was my first movie and my second shoot uh, once I got the visa. So... Um, yeah, my first shoot was like, I felt like I was a celebrity, you know, I was, <laughs> it was the whole hog, you know, two, two days, it was a, for a Taiwanese singer named um, uh, Wu Tsingfeng, and uh, he had come to Korea to do his music video, and we were treated like royalty, I mean, you know, I thought, well, you know, we got into the, the van, and they took us, you know, the whole thing, so Sing Li Ho was my second shoot, and uh it was it was a good experience, you know. It was the first time doing a movie, so um, for me, I had always watched behind the scenes, and I always thought that was really thrilling. And there I was, like actually being able to see it all in person. So for me, even though the it was long, long hours, you know, every shoot, you know, you guys know, are very long hours, and uh, but for me, it was very thrilling. And we had our stunt training. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, I saw right the video. Yeah. Stunt training, yeah. Stunt and training is fun and dangerous. <laughs> it can be dangerous. <laughs> I got I personally have stitches from oh. the last the last stunt training I did. Really? It was all oh. my fault. But I yeah. <laughs> Good times. Wow. Yeah. Be be uh beware of flying weaponry at, at all times when you're <laughs> training. For stunts. Yeah, yeah, I learned that too. <laughs> Getting shot was an experience. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw the YouTube channel that you you was on, you were hell, mm -hmm. and like it was so inspiring for me when I was listening to it because you were like, oh, you planned on traveling for a couple of years, so you sold the house right away, and then yeah, you came to this whole new place, whole new country, and I I really think that's you know some for some people it's really make to it's really hard to make even like a small decision. True. Yeah. So like, how did you get into music? Oh, well, I think, I think, you know, there's things that you just are. You just are innately are born with some, maybe leaning towards one thing or another. You may be science and sciences and I'm maybe arts or something, but I think music was always, in my life, really from my mother and my father, and it was always in the house. My mother uh, sat me down at a piano at a young age, and then I went on in school. I was always learning some instrument or other, and it was just sort of, I think I remember when I was in college, it was the first time I met somebody who didn't have music in their life, and I was like, how can that be? <laughs> how I don't understand, you know? <laughs> how do you not have music, you know? <laughs> It was just always there, and so um, I've done music in many capacities. I was uh, uh, when I was in Israel, I really specialized in music for babies and young children, mm -hmm. which was great. I had mommy and me classes, things like that. Um, later on, when I went back to America, I wanted to. I was interested in healthcare, so I changed and went into got certified as a therapeutic musician. Mm -hmm. Um, doing singing for people in hospices and hospitals who were sick and ill and dying. And I actually love that work and would do it now, but I don't have language, so I need mm. need to, you know, improve my language. And, and performing and busking is my most favorite thing in the world to do. I meet awesome people and just always been there. It's just, you know, it's just something that, you you are, you know, you are that person. It's mm -hmm. just what you do or you are. Or it's like I have my guitar. It's like my I have another arm or something, you know. 
I don't know what to do when I don't have it. <laughs> you know, I have so much respect for buskers because it's, mm. you know, one of those things you can, you're either playing for yourself or you, you know, you could possibly be playing for a crowd of a hundred people at any random moment, at any given moment. Uh, busking is, takes a lot of nerve and it, you know, it, it can be, uh, can be crazy. I don't know. I just like the atmosphere because I don't have to worry about having a performance, mm -hmm. you know, perfecting something or, or making a mistake. I just go with the flow and I meet so many good people. And what actually surprises me when I'm busking is how many people come up and say, hey, can I sing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, wait a minute. I'm here singing and, you know, it's, it's kind of my show, but oh, yeah, that's okay. You Sure, come on up and sing. And then I've met a lot of people that way and you know, form duos and trios and bands that way. So it's actually quite Let nice. Let me sing. And what? Let me sing. <laughs> Let me sing. <laughs> but you said you're not creative. And I think, you know, people in the sciences think they're not creative. Or you don't think it's science is creativity, but I think it's super creative. Mm. Uh, it's probably not creative in the most traditional artsy sense. Really? Well, actually, one of our members, Ray, said this, and I really liked it. So computer science is incredibly creative. <laughs> You are literally creating a new world mm. and a language and culture with it. And I think yeah. that, you mm. know, I don't think you should not call yourself creative. You are quite creative. I agree. I think I think everybody's got some creative sense in them. And mm. the arts are not the only thing that should be considered creative. Thank you. Know, you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and also, on that note, um, hi to everybody out there. Just... Um, Want to make sure that if you would like to ask any questions for our guests or make any comments, please feel free to do so in the chat. Thank you for joining us. Oh, if I, if I may, uh, regarding singing, I, I was... Uh, You're going to sing for us? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, I looked at the past uh, snippets that you posted from Instagram. I noted that you interviewed Schizo before, mm -hmm. who happened to be you know, a friend of mine in Campo de Akio. So. Mm. <laughs> Jack Very was nice. the moderator for that session. Yeah, I've, I've known Schizo for a long, long time, almost since I've been here for the 11 years I've been here. So I want to ask a question, like as, um, you know, it seems like neither of you have a background in acting, right? So you, you weren't trained actors before you started this whole adventure. What was it like being on your first movie set? You know, there are so many other actors there. Some of them already have training. Some of them are, you know, so deep into... You know, we got we have pros like, you know, like my my friend who's here, Joey Albright, right? He's been doing this for a long, long time, works really hard at it. But then when you are on your first movie set as somebody who hasn't really put the, the time in to, to really train, what is it like? Like, what was that feeling for you? Were you intimidated at all? Were you still just so excited? How did you feel about it? Um, well, I actually did some acting uh, in Israel and it was mm. maybe... 30 years ago already but okay, okay so i had a little bit of training but mostly in children's theater and improvisational theater so this uh was very different uh with children's theater you know you have to be very big and large and loud and uh, <laughs> and improvisation you just go with the flow improv is another world in i own. love wow. it wow love it but uh um, but it was many years ago and i was focusing on music since so being the question you know what was it like first of all i love to be able to watch the actors, the professionals, because it's a it's a form of education for me. And as I said, be, being behind the scenes is also it's it's a way to learn. It's on the job training, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. And uh, I get so much out of it. And especially watching the professionals, actors who were you know really, I feel a little guilty as well being there, you know where uh, they have much more experience and and the training behind them and. But on the other hand, I'm also learning. So I, I f have full respect mm. for, number one, the opportunity that I have to be able to do this. And number two, the, the opportunity to, to be with the professionals and, and keep going and keep learning because I think even professionals are still learning. <laughs> uh, well, f first of all, uh, like I had, I'm extremely grateful for the uh, opportunity I had. Um, I always wanted to, to act. I never got any chance nor training. Now I have a family, so I don't I don't let myself do it because it's just, unless I have this kind of you know escapades from from my usual life. Um, but what I found out was that I actually had in my mind an idea of what was going on, 
but they didn't provide us enough information, right? Right, as as we were not, you know, the main the main figures, and they were being extremely secretive about about everything. And so we went into the scenes without a lot of clues on mm -hmm. how we should have felt as those characters, what we were supposed like. We had a, a general idea, but. Uh, we we actually found out that we we, we shot uh, one of the most uh, significant scenes in the first day, and we had absolutely no idea of how it related to the entire of uh, the entirety of the story, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. everybody was expressing right. <laughs> feelings that didn't really fit the situation. So I really wish that you know we we may be new to this. Uh, to to the acting world, and we may not be experienced, but I wish that the the producers uh, learned that we are willing to put in as much effort as anybody else if they just trust us enough. Right. Yeah. That w I remember that. No, our team and we were kind of a a significant part of the movie as well. Right. But we had no idea. Mm. And maybe only I think two people, two of the the our team knew what the whole story was, or three, including you know Nas and Anna and Gabriel. Right. They they had specific lines, and they were at some of the first readings, and they they knew the story, but they the, were not allowed to tell. To they were not allowed to tell us. Mm -hmm. Everything was very secretive, and we really didn't know how to. We didn't know who we were right. <laughs> portraying, mm -hmm. what our character or role was, and. And of course, if you don't know that, you don't know how you're supposed to play it. Mm. So as as Massimo said, that we didn't know what to express, how to express, and what they were looking for. So I remember we we all came back, and well, there was another professional actress among our, in our team, right? Yes, a Korean woman who was making a comeback after having a family, and uh, and I remember all of us were just kind of upset because. We thought we didn't do a good job. Yeah. We thought we didn't we didn't give them what we could have given them, but um, nobody complained, so we figured it must be okay. But we ourselves were were not not happy with what we had produced. Mm. So yeah. So in general, and I find that happens a lot. Actually, uh, I don't know if that's just a Korean thing or or if it's everywhere else, but. Many times you go to a shoot and you're not given enough details. Mm. And sometimes you'll get a script in advance. Um, sometimes you'll get something, do this on the spot or something. And uh, it's very hard to actually give it your all and give your best when you don't have enough to go on. You don't have a basis to pull from. You don't know that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> basically, is it like that in like drama shooting scenes mm. as well? Or yeah. Well, I, I cannot I cannot speak for longer scenes because I've only mm. done very short. Like mm. I've I've done one day of shooting and it was covering you know a couple of scenes in a in a couple of different episodes. But for that amount of time, I I think I almost got more information there than mm. for Sun Hyo. <laughs> it really depends on who is producing, right? Mm. So you know some directors are really really open and they want to. Give as much information as possible. Some, you know, some people really like to, as you experience, keep everything closed because they don't want the story to get out, you know, mm. and, and especially with, you know, as the foreign actors in there, a lot of directors just, they just simply don't trust us, you know. They expect us to be on Instagram telling all of our friends, hey, this is where I am. This is what <laughs> Which we are. And, you know, <laughs> we are. <laughs> so, and then we end up giving the story away on accident. So it, it, yeah. it, I understand also why they decide to be a bit secretive. They kind of have to. Yeah. But you should at least know enough to do your job well. Right. Right. And so then if they are going to be that secretive, then <clears> it's up to the director to really communicate with you when you're there. Okay, this is what I need from you. Right. That's what proper directors would do but you know in a in a film like sung Ho, where there's so many moving parts the directors quite often and i don't i wasn't there so i don't know your experience but they don't have um enough attention to give to each piece that they need that they should give to right they should give the proper amount of attention to and so they end up spreading it and then this ad runs here and tells mm -hmm. you this and this ad tells <laughs> you that and 
the, you know, the writers coming and correcting this and that. And there's just so many people that it just ends up being a big mess. Well, I do want to give credit to the assistant director um, who, after, you know, she heard our complaints, she did come and she started to explain everything to us during the breaks and what was expected. And she told us the story. She really put a, a good effort to put us in the know once we were there. So, right. Yeah, we really appreciated that. <laughs> it, it was th that was actually helped a lot. Because after, again, after the first scene, we were like, "What are we doing here?" And then we got more information, and you know, every everything went at least better. I wouldn't yeah. say it was one hundred percent, but you know, we were we had an idea of who we were and what we were doing. So we we heard the story. We were able yeah. to hear the story, the plot, and and uh, yeah, and so it made a big difference. <laughs> The Ray asked um, basically how much of that, you know, miscommunication do you think happened because of uh, language barrier? Was was there one or were there enough English speakers? Um, well, I don't think it was a lot of a language barrier for once because the AD spoke pretty good English. Um, there was a Korean actress with us who speak who spoke uh, decent English. Uh, Gabriel speaks better Korean than I do, and I speak Korean pretty decently so among among the you know the few of us i don't think there was any communication problem it was mostly a again a secrecy issue mm -hmm. they did they were not willing to give us a, at first uh all the information necessary probably because they they thought even though our part was relatively big we didn't have a lot of lines most of us never talked during the movie mm -hmm. uh so probably they said whatever you know, we, we'll cut it out, we'll, we'll uh, cut here, edit there, and we'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I still learn in Korean. I'm, my Korean is very basic. And at the time, it was next to nothing. And the, with the help of the other team members, that really helped me. And the, um, some of the, the assistant director and some other of our agents who were there assigned to us, you know, they usually have somebody assigned who's going to help you. Um, for me, I think there was only one time when I remember that I didn't get the message and, you know, we had to make our eyes look a certain direction. And <laughs> I don't know if you remember, they're going, Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I'm blowing it. <laughs> but sometimes there is a language uh, problem. Yeah, just – and there is English and there is, you know, basic Korean and basic English, Some, but sometimes – what more something more detailed what they're looking for is sometimes hard to communicate yeah in, in that sense i think a good advice for anybody who wants to uh act in korean in korea not in korean is to learn korean mm. e because even if you don't ha actually act in korean but you need the language to avoid this kind of issues that is wonderful advice mm -hmm. and i i want to actually second that for anybody out there who's willing to take the step to get into the korean acting business at all i believe it should be in almost a prerequisite please learn korean you know to at, at least to a point where you can communicate with the ad's and they can explain to you what it is that they want without having to have somebody else in between because the things often get lost in translation yeah you know we might assume we're doing what they're asking us to do and then at the end of the day, they wanted us to do something totally different. And there's nobody to blame but ourselves. Right. So, The AD being the artistic director for those who... But, um, yeah, I mean, it is... It, I do find difficulty sometimes now because, you know, my, my Korean is so bad. <laughs> and Korean is one of the most, like, hardest languages to learn, you know. Like. Korean is very difficult. Yeah. And... And I have, am trying and I'm working on it, but it's slow coming. I, it's not that I don't, I do speak another language, so I know that you how to learn another language, but Korean is something mm -hmm. all of its own. <laughs> but I think also, you know, when you speak other languages, and you're very good, you already speak many languages. Max, you know, speaks a lot of languages, but there's also a, a, a cultural thing and a, and a thought process that goes with language. Oh, yeah. That even if you have the words, the idea may not be conveyed so easily. So you really have to, in Korea, when you're a guest here and you're working in this field and in, 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 in acting, you really have to know more than just the language as well. Mm -hmm. 
you need to, you know, really be attentive. You need to be respectful. You need to don't feel bad about asking questions too, just so you could get it right. So I think there's a lot that goes into that. You know, had some people say, you know, make make a sad expression or or make a happy expression, and but then they don't want that particular one. Oh no, not that. You know, so it's. It's not just the words. Yeah, that you I need mean, to. even even sadness or you know happiness has so many different mm -hmm. facial and, and 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 body expressions that go with it. That's right. Unless you know exactly what they're looking for, it's. But I think somebody uh, it was Gabriella. I think Gabriella. Thanks for that advice. <laughs> who said, if the director was happy. Then you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't question it. You did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything that you wish you knew before you started on acting career in South in Korea? Um, well, I, I wish I knew there was the chance because maybe I maybe I would have you know tried harder to get <laughs> to get into acting a, a little earlier and. Uh, another piece of advice, uh, even when you go to auditions, shave. They don't like beards. <laughs> and, uh, hey, what are you trying to say? Like, oh. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> I think, uh, I, you know, I just recently went to some auditions and I think I did everything wrong <laughs> that you could have done. Um, when I first went to audition for this movie, I really was clueless. I didn't really even know I was going to an audition. <laughs> so I said, like, okay, this is fun, you know. But this recent audition I went to, um, I I was n really nervous and I just couldn't, because I knew what I was doing and then it was really, went really bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it went bad or not, but I felt it went bad. And uh, I think, uh, what was I going to say? That uh, if, I, if I wish I knew something before, I think I wish I knew Korean language before. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had, I mean, I did study before I came to Korea, but I, I obviously need to know a lot more to be able to communicate. So I, I wish I had known more basic Korean, more fluent. In that sense, I think, Korean. I think uh, the fact that I came to Korea as a student uh, gave me a big boost because I was able to take language courses in, uh, during my PhD mm -hmm. uh, in university. And also... Uh, you know, when all the Korean friends around me were trying to speak in English, I kept sp speaking in Korean and my broken <laughs> Korean and tried to, <laughs> you know, uh, that I think there's um, one part of, of learning a foreign language, whether it's Korean or uh, any other language that is extremely tied to um, social relationships and uh, everyday life. And you have to force yourself into it. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot yeah. of people I know, you know, maybe they they try uh, learning Korean, but uh, they find it too hard, or they get they get e enough with English that they don't feel like they need to push themselves as hard, mm -hmm. and so they end up never actually learning. They are stuck in that you know beginner level where they know how to say hello or can please give me that, but nothing more. I, th I think also another thing that I learned recently about working um, in acting here with the films and the dramas and things like that, that um, you're going to, it's really exciting when you find yourself with the celebrities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with Sing Lee Ho, I was, I was pretty sure we weren't going to see any celebrities, that they would be filmed separately, sort of like a Hollywood thing or something. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time I saw Song Joong Ki just sitting there, I thought, well, that's not him. <laughs> you know, couldn't be him. Maybe just standing or something like that. And then he went and did a, a shoot and came back. And I saw him on the monitor. I, oh, that's him. <laughs> he really him. And we were, you know, really face to face with the actress. And, and very I'm, menacing. Very menacing. <laughs> and also, I, I've been in some other ones where you're face to face. And, and, you know, my natural tendency is to want to say, hey, I really like your acting or something like that, you know, to talk to them. And what I have realized since, when I'm getting more training myself, that, uh, and we've been told, don't talk to the actors because they are actually focusing <laughs> and they're, uh, they're actually spending time trying to get their lines and their mode and whatever it is, you know, their character into their character that whatever they need to do to prepare for their scene, mm -hmm. they're actually involved in that. 
And if you come up and you start talking to them, they lose their focus. So I really didn't pay attention to that. And now I'm quite aware of that, even as myself getting more, uh, maybe more detailed roles. So I realize how much of focus and concentration you really need to do that acting. You know, it's, it's not a piece, you don't just come in and say, hey, you know, your lines come out and you do your thing. It's, it's something you really have to work on and that's one a of those, lot. That's one of those learning experiences that you talk about, right? On the, right. On the job learning. Right. right. Where, okay, when I go and I, I know I have to deliver my lines, you know, in a specific way. So, you know, you might practice your lines in your head or go in a corner somewhere and, you know, deliver your lines to yourself or, you know, find a bathroom and, and recite your lines in the mirror. You know, that th this is the kind of thing that we do when we're preparing, you know, instead of being with our friends like, hey, so did you see the game yesterday? You know, something something like that, right? And then also what I would say is um, some actors, it's not even just that. Some actors are also afraid of English. <laughs> <And so laughs> True. As much as afraid of we are as Korean, they're afraid quite, of English. <laughs> quite often it's that simple. You know, they'd... I was in one film with a, one actor that I that I've grown to know pretty well, and I found that out later. Why, you know, we asked him, so why did you eat lunch away from us? You know, because we were together for almost three months, mm. and it, why did you eat lunch away from us? Why, you know, why did were we so separate? And he said, honestly, I was afraid because everybody else spoke English but me, and my English is poor. And I've, <laughs> I I was a bit sad for him about that because you know with that, I told him, I said, you know, well, we would have been totally fine with that. Nobody expects you to speak perfect English with right. perfect diction. I don't even speak perfect English with perfect diction. So nobody <laughs> expects that from you. What, what What is perfect English? What is it? Perfect. British English, American English. <laughs> exactly. East so, Coast, West Coast, amazing. Texas. There is yeah. no perfect English. Right. <laughs> so, and in, so, yeah. yeah. And some, some actors, say, uh, everybody's just people. And some people have, everybody has a different way of finding their place and, and doing their job. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be mindful and respectful of that when we're on the set. When we're extras, we're like, man, this is fun. Woo -hoo. Mm -hmm. And exactly. we're, just, <laughs> we're just socializing. But, you know, all around us, mm -hmm. there's people, the crew, the staff. That's right. Everybody's doing their job and everybody's focused and they're working long, long hours. That's right. And exactly. they're tired. And I think that... Even as extras, I've seen a lot of extras being so disrespectful That's in right. general. And mm -hmm. I think there's something that, you know, if I had to give some advice, I mean, I would just say, look, sit back and, and be quiet and do, you know, let the people do their work and listen to what they tell you to do. Mm -hmm. And don't joke around and crack. I mean, this is a fun, it's a really fun social experience. You're there long hours, but but it's a serious work. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. work. Absolutely. And it's work, and it's right. A job, right? It's a job. Maybe, maybe you know, uh, bring a book or have have uh, some you know something to stream on your phone, whatever yeah, you to were, pass oh, the time because that there like there are a yeah. l there's a lot of downtime, <laughs> lot of downtime. Downtime. Yeah. Sometimes you you get in at like six in the morning mm -hmm. for makeup and everything. You go on set and you wait the entire time until lunch, doing nothing but mm -hmm. waiting. So there's a lot of downtime. But it's important to understand that, you know, you need to be there and be ready for whenever they call you. And we're getting paid for that. And downtime, we're getting right? paid yeah. for that, right? <laughs> we're but getting paid to sit there and watch YouTube all day. Yeah, it's your downtime, but it's not their downtime. That's right. That's the key. And and you know, you may be sitting around, but they are working their butts off, and and they work hard. Boy, do they work hard! Mm -hmm. I, I remember yeah. uh, one thing that, that I think caught you by by. How, how, how can I say emotionally as well? No, not by surprise, but I, I was stunned. Uh, in one particular scene that was in which we were basically bystanders, uh, but one of the actors uh, who finally finds uh, his daughter again, mm. right? And it's a, it's a desperate scene, like of of joy, and and uh, and he had to shoot the same crying, right? Uh, embrace mm -hmm. a few times at, at a certain point he had to take a break yeah. and I was thinking to myself man if I had to cry so many times <laughs> mm -hmm. in such a short time you know mm -hmm. and, and force myself into that state of mind at the end of the of the day I would be broken mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why they get the big bucks though yeah <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I think, yeah, I mean, and that is another point. When you're shooting, you do the scene many times over because mm -hmm. 
what they call a point of view. You know, they're taking the scene from the back, from the sides, from the front. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're doing a close-up. Maybe they're doing a far away. And every time you're just waiting there, and then they change the, the cameras. The camera people are changing around and changing the set. And you're just standing there, and you're going, what the heck? You know, why are we just standing here? Well, there's a lot going on while you're just standing there. That's right. That's right. And you need to be aware of it. And those are the things that if you don't have any real training, and, and even if, if you've been trained maybe in school, until you get on the set, you don't really notice. You don't really know that that stuff is going back. I don't know what they teach you in the school. Maybe they teach you about what the crew does, what all the all, everybody's job is. But, you know, you see that stuff when you're behind the scenes and when you're doing the shoot. And you just need to be aware of it. I mean, I don't think many people, I don't know how many people who are listening or watching are aware of really the amount of work that goes into these things. Then you get called back to do a voiceover or something, mm-hmm. and you know it right. just. And we filmed for how many days? We shot for six days. Six days, and yeah. like it, it, when it comes down to the movies, I think it's less than a minute we have on screen. <laughs> but I mean that—that's the amount of work that goes into one minute of production. And right? those were twelve-hour, twelve, you know, or hour or more days. Right. You know, so think of how many hours went into that scene, which was only maybe two or three minutes. You know. That's right. That's right. Every angle and, you know, every actor has their own, or every director has their own way to communicate to you, you know, what it is they want. Mm-hmm. So if you don't get it right, you still have to do it eight more times. And then you have to do it another eight more times from the other angle. And then, oh, your costume, there's something wrong with your costume. So let's fix that and shoot it again. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the world we're in. That's, you know, kind of. Yeah. I, I have only one complaint. Oh, only one? Let's hear it. <laughs> only, only one. That's good. I had, I had one scene in which I had a headshot, mm-hmm. and I nailed it. I know I nailed it because <laughs> the, the, the cameramen were saying, oh, like he, he's about as good as a main actor. And they cut it off because it didn't oh. fit in the fight, in the fight flow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was really disappointed in the fight scene because you know, yeah. we had trained for that. We had two two days of training, right, for right. those fight scenes, yeah. and uh, and when it, we saw it on the film, it was like zoop, it was like I could hardly see it, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, actually, yeah. a lot a lot of that part was was cut. I yeah, think. a lot of that yeah. was cut, and you were doing so well with getting like you know pushed and shoved. And <laughs> <laughs> actually, I got a good piece of advice from one of my seniors, and he told me this Korean dude has been in the industry for a long, long time, and he told me, Jack, you're getting paid to act you're not getting paid to appear yeah on right. screen you're getting paid to True. act. so your job is to go on set deliver mm-hmm. your lines and go home right that's it and now if you appear on screen then it's a bonus right <laughs> but I, I, that when i heard him say that i didn't like that i hated that mm. i fought that it's like no i i'm i want to be on in the movies i want to be on the big screen he was like but that's not your job that's the bonus that's the icing on the cake right and yeah. I didn't understand that until the last movie I, that where our entire scene, our entire scene was cut out. That was painful to me because yeah, I worked, really. I worked so hard memorizing those lines and working hard, you know, to to get everything just right. I shaved my beard, which I never do, <laughs> <laughs> and I was excited about it. And then I go to the premiere, and everybody's ready, and I see myself for that long. I said, "Wow." And that was painful to me until I remembered, oh, that's what he was talking about. Well, I did get paid for that. I got paid extra for that. Okay. And then I was able to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a job. It's a job. It's exactly Acting that. is a job. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, you know, the painful reality of it. You know, you're so used to seeing celebrities and this and that. Right. And like I said, they're just people who are doing a job. That's right. Uh, and... Uh, it's not all the glory it seems to <laughs> it, it takes it takes a long time actually to you know to get to that level and for for any uh amount of of celebrities that there are there's you know hundred a thousand time more actors and actresses that don't make it even though they try as hard as as they can and sometimes is it's not just about how well you act, it's also a matter of uh, luck, you know, mm-hmm. finding the right connections at the right time. I really hope that, you know, 
I would break I, I would break through and I could give up on my programming career. <laughs> <laughs> programming career. You're lucky, but you you were working a lot during the shoot, so yeah. Yeah. You, at least you had something to do. We were just sitting around watching everybody and playing with with the young actress and <laughs> having a good time. But uh, yeah, but when your kids get older, you can go back and do it. Still, yeah, I mean, keep yeah, it keep it going. You know, <laughs> like I I know. Um, you know, when I had my kids and they were little, I still kept doing my music in one way or another. I found ways to keep doing it. And so that when your kids grow up and you're sort of empty nest, as they say, you don't find yourself with nothing. You know, you still have that and you can go forward again, not or still, but even deeper, you know. Right. I mean, I think I think people who make it who are really celebrity have a really hard time having families and they... You're either going to have family or you're going to have your career, I think. That's my just my observation, but I don't know if that's true. You'd have to ask the big celebrities. But, I mean, <laughs> I, I with all the divorces you see and everything else, I don't know if family goes with career so well. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, to it's true for, for <laughs> everyone, not just celebrities. It's just that celebrities make it, like, it's even a more extreme because of the kind of life they have. But, I mean, uh, I, I can talk. I can speak for myself and my family, and I know it's really hard. Mm. Unless there's, uh, you know, close family that you can ask favors to, unless there's social support for working, you know, uh, mothers and fathers. It's really, really hard. I think uh, couples that where one is the uh, performer and one is the manager also <laughs> kind of work well. <laughs> <laughs> I always dreamed of having that. <laughs> Did you have any experience with the like the agencies that were there running the the shoot? Like, did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, let me let me be, and before you answer that, <laughs> uh, just be mindful that we often work for them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not sure exactly what experiences you're referring to. The only real thing I I would mention, like. My contact has always been very polite. That's awesome. Um, uh, you know, I'm I'm grateful that they they uh, found me out and and got and got me into the auditions. The only thing is that, and it probably it was as much as my mistake as there was, you know, a little bit being not entirely clear on their part mm -hmm. was that I didn't have a contract. So, you know. They they told me a sum, and it wasn't clear whether that sum would go entirely to me or would it split between me and them. Mm -hmm. And so, in the end, I got less than I thought I would. But since I have a full-time job, I'm lucky enough. I was like, okay, I got my chance at, at shooting a movie, you know, with celebrity, Korean celebrities. I'm like, okay, who cares? I, I, I'm good. But <laughs> uh, if if that's your only source of income, that's what you're betting on. Absolutely mm -hmm. make everything clear 100% and get a contract before you start shooting. Were you surprised actually that this, that contracts aren't standard in, in the business with, you know, as an actor? Well, I mean, I, I assumed that there would be a contract, but having never acted, I just said, okay, what? Well, whatever i don't know if i will ever act again so you know i just let it go uh and obviously contracts need to th there's no standard contract because every actor is paid a different amount that's right, on that's you know th th their career uh but yeah definitely that's something to look out for yeah i i agree i mean i think that i was very new in korea and i'm still new in korea and to the industry and how it works but from what i I understand and from experience, uh, everybody's having a different experience. Every agency is different. There's nothing standardized, mm. uh, which is a problem, uh, especially for foreigners. We need to know standard prices, standard fees, payment dates, uh, contracts. I also didn't have a contract at that time. Uh, and many times I am not offered a contract unless it's usually by a, a company I'm doing a commercial for a company or something and or a photo shoot or something and then they want to use your image but for the acting i have not yet mo for the most part had a contract mm -hmm. and uh, i think that that's the one thing that would help us a lot 
uh, in our careers here, especially as foreigners. I don't know how it works for Koreans, but if we could have some kind of some, uh, between the agents, the agents and and the actor, the talent should know, should have a standard listing of what's expected and what we should be paid, and then you can negotiate from there, mm -hmm. either more or less or however you want to. I think one good piece of advice I got was that. You know, you need to decide for yourself what you're worth. Mm -hmm. What's your mm -hmm. worth? And uh, since there's no standards, <laughs> right. really, I mean, we try. Generally speaking, there's a sort of a, an understood standard pay, but nothing's in writing. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems to be. If there is, if there is, I'd like to know about it. Mm -hmm. But but I think that you should decide what you're worth, and negotiate what you feel comfortable with. Whatever it be, be, be it a lower or a high pay, whatever you feel is right for you as your self-worth, and then negotiate that with your agent. You, uh, As freelancers, we work with many different agents and agencies, and uh, some are better, some are worse. You know, everybody's sort of a free-for-all here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think it would be very helpful to everybody mm -hmm. if there was some kind of standardized listing mm -hmm that everybody had to, some baseline that we all had to, to adhere to and then work mm -hmm. from there. Well, I'm kind of curious, like, how do you get to know those agencies at the very beginning, like when you're first starting an acting career? Because if you're like a real beginner, then you don't, it's really likely that you don't have any connections to this acting world and all that. Then how did all of you guys like, kind of get to know the agencies and... Yeah. Or is well, like as, a as I said, when I I first decided to stay in Korea, after I'd been a tourist a couple of times, <laughs> and my tourism limits were up, uh, I did go looking for a job. And in the process of looking for the job, I was referred to an agency. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I got to mine. I see sometimes many people wanting to come to Korea, who advertise on Facebook or Craigslist. Say, you know, can anybody recommend me? who to turn to, how do I go about this, and they're looking for advice. Um, I don't know how it worked for you. Yeah, as, as I mentioned before, it was uh, through a friend. Mm -hmm. um, but these days, I think if you look for, you know, foreign actor agencies on either Facebook or even Google uh, or Naver, you will probably find something. Um, and I haven't been looking... Um, into it anymore again because I have another job so <laughs> mm. that, that that that's like of a side gig for me I would like to do it more but I have debts and everything so <laughs> I cannot <laughs> I can I cannot afford to you know to, to, to go about without without a, a steady salary uh, but definitely you can find something if you if you look or uh, they'll find you or they'll fi they find, find you yeah. if you if you mm -hmm. you know you have korean friends and you start saying hey you know i would like to start acting do you have a you know a friend that can tell me something about it and probably right. you you will get to it somehow There's so many messages in instagram random messages like hey are you interested in being in a tv show or a movie right. send me your profile or you know yeah i think Instagram is like your resume. It's like your right. profile page in Korea. Exactly. You need to have a, a proper Instagram account. I, I've gotten many jobs through Instagram, mostly, and then referrals. Um, I don't, and that's why I, I'm not getting any more parts. <laughs> I, I read somewhere you said you're a 95% computer programmer and 5% actor. I said 5%. I, I mean, it's probably like 2 two, two or 3%. Well, so <laughs> I, I would like to... See, an Instagram would get that 2% to a quick 5% if you had it. Okay, then, then I should do it. Now, before b before we get off the subject of uh, agencies, and I, I promise I won't harp on it for anybody out there who knows me and knows how I think. Um, I, I did want to say, I wanted to ask rather, what do you think? I, I felt that the atmosphere is very different here in the relationship of uh, actor and agent. For example, mm. coming from the States, your agent works for you, right? right? So you right. hire your agent and you give him a percentage of whatever the total pay is. Here, it's the reverse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel that exactly. It's exactly the opposite. When I, I thought, I've got an agent and a management, you know, I thought they're going to get me jobs. You know, they're going to be work. It doesn't work like that. They don't hardly get you any jobs. Mm -hmm. They get a nice commission, 
well, I don't know if it's a nice commission, but they get a commission. <laughs> and to, the keyword, I don't know. I you don't, don't. You don't know what the commissions are. What well, the payments are. I know what I pay them, <laughs> but I don't know what they're getting from any other, you know, oh, jobs okay. or whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you know, they may be getting a lot and paying me a little. I don't know. But whatever I get, they get a percentage of. Mm -hmm. But I, like you said, I thought they were going to manage me, <laughs> you know, find me work and, and you know, it. it's really the opposite. Mm -hmm. I manage myself and, and I have to pay them for that. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, and it's every now and then I have to remind myself, wait, they're working for me. Shouldn't I be calling the shots here? <laughs> but it's it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So yeah, I thought you have an agency, then you know you're going to do well. And what you were saying about making a living, I mean, if you really want to make a living as in acting or or the arts here, forget it. I mean, it was going okay before COVID, before coronavirus. Um, there was kind of steady work. But for me, whoever's looking at, you know, older gray-haired woman, um, there aren't many, I don't have a lot of competition. So when they are looking for that kind of a role, um, it'll be me or somebody else, mm -hmm. but there aren't too many somebody else's to choose from. Um, in Massimo's case or, or with the younger actors, they have a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. So, you know, unless they're looking for a specific look or a specific language, um, it's going to be difficult right. to get the work, and you need to really work at it twenty four seven. Uh, not just here. I mean, you know, I worked in the states where I worked in Israel uh, as as an independent, self employed freelancer. You're working twenty four seven, working all the time, getting you know, getting your being visible, uh, looking for jobs, applying for jobs, auditioning. I mean, you're just doing it all the time. It's part of your life. It's who you are, and you don't always have what to live on. You need to kind of like like the squirrels, you know, or the you know, play. Just sort of collect what you can when you got the work, and when you don't have the work, you're living off that what you got when you had the work. So it it comes and goes. It it's not always there. So uh, I I don't think you should if you're going to go into this line of work anywhere, probably in the world. I can't speak for um, everybody, but I think that you, you need to be prepared to have some other source of income or, or just, well, you know, I was told, uh, some, also some good advice, but some very difficult advice to follow is don't have the plan B, give up the day job. And when you don't have money to fall back on, it's very difficult. But if you always have your plan B, you're never going to move into your profession. Yeah. I, I you're think, not going to do the work. I think that that's perfectly reasonable when, you know, you're alone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's when harder kids, when when, when right. you have family. Definitely, I agree. <laughs> well, you know, it's not easy to be in a different country uh, than your native country and to try and learn how to live in that country. And I feel like uh, I'm always aware of the fact that I'm a guest here mm -hmm. and that I'm still learning how to be in in Korea, how to live in this country. And so, number one, I'm really grateful for the fact that I have this opportunity that Korea has embraced me in a very positive way. I've been really um, given good opportunities and and supported for that. Um, it's not regular, it's not, not consistent, but it's there and where I know that if in America and Israel where I was living, I don't think at my age people are retiring and, and expected to sit around and twiddle their thumbs, you know? They, they don't think that they're going to start a new career. And for me, it's a, it's like a new career at this this end of life, which is really exciting. And Korea gave that to me. So I'm, I'm grateful and appreciative of every opportunity I get. I only wish there were more. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the coronavirus can leave <laughs> us so that, you know, work will become more consistent again. Did you see the comments on the on your video on YouTube, like comments by Koreans? Like... The, I captured some comments and there were mostly um, those students in, living in Korea. It's, it's in Korean. I'll just translate it for uh -huh. you. Um, a lot of comments were like involved. Oh, I really envy you. Oh, yes. And oh, I, I really like this one. Like, OMG, you are living a life uh, where it's, uh, you're living a life of where it's, a lot of people might envy, and I really want to learn that passion. So I was checking all the comments on the 
YouTube and I really thought the same because it's kind of hard to have a passion. It's it's easy to have a passion once, but then it's kind of really difficult to continue that like consistently. Mm. Yeah, I I do see a lot of those. I see a lot of those comments, mm. and it kind of makes me feel funny because like uh, I I think my whole life I've always just gone after what I had an interest in. Mm. I was never kind of. You know, I thought everybody said, oh, you should get a, what is the matter with you? You should get a regular job. You know, it's your own fault that you don't have any money or something, <laughs> you know. And I said, but I can't live any other way. Mm. I have to do what I love. I have to follow what I'm interested in. And I always have. And I never really consciously uh, made that choice. I just, I just did it. And when people say I envy you or something and they feel like, you know, society puts, expectations on us of the how they feel like you know when you're 55 or something you should that's it mm. stop working and retire now you can go have a great vacation well when, when you turn 55 you don't want to have a great vacation mm -hmm. you want to keep working at what you love <laughs> you know but society tells you no you can't like society tells you don't be a musician or don't go into the arts because you won't make any money mm. well why should you do, I can't do computer work. <laughs> you know, my sister makes a lot of money doing computer work. I can't do that. I, I'm not built for that. So it's kind of silly to say, like, you kind of fit in and, and do what they tell you to do and work nine to five. And you say, you know, why do you work? Uh, you work nights. You know, what's the matter with you? Yeah. I said, well, I was so excited coming to Korea because I, f I said, I, I finally found my people. <laughs> Everybody here works all night long. <laughs> like I, I'm texting somebody at four in the morning just because I happen to be up. You know, I don't think I'm going to like disturb them. I figure they're sleeping. And then they answer me and we're having a conversation. And I'm like, this is so exciting. You know, so I think that when people say I envy you, I think that it's just that, you know, you, you don't have to be stay stuck in what people tell you to do. You just need to do what you love and your life will be fine. You know, it's okay. If you love money, then go after money, then mm -hmm. stick in a job you don't like, make compromises, whatever, just for the money. But that was never something that I wanted to do. I, you know, and, and oftentimes I, I don't have a lot of things, but I also don't want a lot of things. <laughs> I just want to enjoy life. And so I think. Uh, my only advice is that you can do it too. I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary as far as I'm concerned. I think that everybody can do that. And there's a song that says, you know, you just have to have the want to. You want to do it, then do it. So I, I, don't, I don't see myself as, a, as different or exceptional or as privileged or as um, uh, gifted or anything. I'm just, just living the life that I, I love to live. It's not always great. Sometimes it's very lonely and sometimes very difficult not to have the funds. But after a while you go, you know, there's some other things that are in life that are worth it. We Life is short, you know. I had my kids and then they turned 18. I was like, wait a minute, where are you going? I just figured out how to, <laughs> just figured out how to be a mom. And now you're like, gone? I just what do I do now? To you. <laughs> yeah, I just figured out, you know, you can, oh, yeah, right. No. So, you know, and it went by like that. You know, and now I'm almost 67. I'm going, what? How'd that happen? Like, I don't, I feel like everybody I know here in Korea is like between 25 and 35. And I think I'm that age too. <laughs> then I look in the mirror, I go, oh, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you got to just live it. You know, life is, is short. It is short. Make the most of it. It's a long winded answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a valuable answer. Go for what you love. Do what yeah. you love. Follow your passion. Follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. And just go straight forward. And yeah. I mean, I know some people say, I don't, but I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what my dream is. Well, then take a moment and, and think about it. Everybody's got something. And, and, and don't feel bad if your dream was just to raise your children and have good children. That's right. And mm -hmm. to invest in your children because that's r probably the most important job you could have the most important dream and passion that you could have. I envy people who just stayed in one place and raised their family and were happy with their families mm. and have big families all around them. I envy that. They say different strokes for different folks, right? And, yeah. And I really believe in that too. For some people, you know, being, you know I, I look at like my grandmother, for example, she you knows she has a university degree, decided to be a housewife. 
mm-hmm. you know, because she wanted to raise mm-hmm. my mom and, and, and my family that right. way. So who am I to say that that's the wrong way to go? It's, you know, mm-hmm. hey, you wasted your university education. No, you didn't. Yeah. You used that university education and raised a, a lot of awesome people. Right. You know, with that. So different strokes for diff- different folks. But other, you know, other people, hey, if you want to, you know, do your thing and the you want to get, get a job for Samsung, you want to, you know, do something with, um, you know, the stock market, whatever it is that you want to do, follow that. And, you know, don't let everybody else dictate what it is that you want to do. I've I've learned that everybody is an important piece of the puzzle that keep this world going and make this world, keep this world together. You know, we put this, uh, every job is important. Every piece of the puzzle, every one of us is one of those pieces and without it, we wouldn't exist. That's right. Every job is important, including us foreign actors out there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we matter too. We're also important. Don't forget us. Foreign actors it, matter. <laughs> All right, I think we're we're winding down on time. All right, quick stories. Quick, cool stories. Fun, fun <laughs> memories. Okay, here's my fun side. memory. My first memory going to the the training was I thought my, I was told you're going to go to movie education, and I thought, oh, finally we're going to figure out what we're doing. We're going to hear that we're going to sit in the you know the director will be there and we'll hear everything. So I got all dressed up in my dress and everything, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go, and I, I ended up in the in the dojo. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? And I said, I'm like, what's going on? And everybody's like tumbling and ru- and falling down and <laughs> and in their gym shorts and everything. And there I was all dressed up. And I said, well, you're, this is stunt training. She said, movie education. <laughs> right? And it was stunt training. Yeah, well, that got lost in translation. Lost in translation. <laughs> lost in, that's that's where the about. language was a problem. Uh-huh. And Max, you remember... <laughs> You know, I just said, oh, well, you know, I had my long underwear on and I had it under my dress and I went, oh, wait, if I got to jump down and spin around and fall down, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and you did great. Just when you <laughs> were amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, okay, here we go. <laughs> Everybody was laughing, but. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I, we were having fun. Like, I, I remember when I just let myself fall to the, to yeah. the, to the floor and. I, I practiced judo for for a, a few years when I was younger. And I was like, "Oh, this feels nice." <laughs> <laughs> everybody was everybody like, was like, "Oh, what was that? Who's this crazy guy?" <laughs> yeah, we all looked at you like, "Oh my god, what just happened?" <laughs> those judo, you never knew those judo skills were going to come in handy, again, right? Did you? Uh, yeah. yeah, but um, or the, I think I, one of the the, the fondest memory, memories I had I had was one of the. F- last days of shooting um uh, we were in one of the of the downtime periods we we're all together and there they, we it was us and a few korean actors as well and i i, I felt like we were joking and and uh, you know having fun um independently of language barriers or or culture differences and it was it was a, a moment in which all of these extras you know came together and we're just you know chatting around joking making dumb dumb stuff yeah know. i think we had become a family by then yeah you know, we felt very close and and it, it was hard to say goodbye yeah we took our last picture and said goodbye. It was difficult after you know those long hours and and many days of shooting. You you start to really become a family. It's, so sometimes it's, those relationships yeah. are lasting, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yep. definitely. Yeah, and one one other story that happened to me when uh, they said you know don't approach uh, the actors or something like that. But uh, I had a picture of Song Jung Ki looked just like a friend of mine, and I was dying to just show him the picture. You know. And so I chose, there was a moment when he was just sitting there and I went, brought my phone over. I said, you know, you look just like my friend. And he said, oh, let me see that, you know. He said, oh, yeah, but he's he's much more handsome than me. <laughs> <laughs> and then everybody came running over. It was like, oh, my God. I said, no, no, it's okay. I'm not taking pictures. No, it's, you know. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> one, one of the younger actors uh, one day took, took, after we had wrapped up almost everything, we were out of the set. He took one picture with uh, Kim Teddy, 
right? Kim Tae Ri, yeah. yeah. And oh yeah, oh my there god. There was like <laughs> we were going, we were driving to go eat something, and it like phones started it like ringing. A tsunami like, who, of who, yeah. the, who took that picture? <laughs> <laughs> Take it out. <laughs> it be deleted from his phone, and it, like it never left his, his phone, right? It, mm-hmm. He didn't post it anywhere. It was on his phone. <laughs> Somehow, somebody got to know that he took a picture with her, and with her like, permission, oh, I understood. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, with her permission. <laughs> yeah, all but hell broke loose. Wow! It it was a tsunami of like where who where? <laughs> the phones were ringing off the <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> embargoes can be difficult to deal with. I agree. Um, it's about time for us to wrap up today's podcast. Thank you for Rahel and Max for joining today, and we also thank you who are listening to this through Instagram Live. Thank you, Jack, Rahel, and Max. And up- updates on our next session will be shared on our Instagram at Creative Soul Sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>